This, my friends, is a Samsung NP900X3C Ultrabook computer. It's a small 13.3 inch laptop. Now, I spotted one of these on a second hand site here for 40 euros. It's described as being for parts only, and when I contacted the owner, he said that the only issue with it is that the is a motherboard fault. So I said, I was passing by where he lives and I said for 40 euros it's probably worth a punt and it might give me some material for the channel so I'm gonna collect this and I'll show you what I've bought when it comes back here's a few more pictures of it here just to get a look at it looks quite nice it'll be interesting to see what his one looks like won't it okay so this is what I've collected it doesn't look quite the same as the picture does it but to be fair to the guy I bought it from, he said it's for parts only, so I think he's selling it on the assumption that somebody wants like a battery or a keyboard or, you know, one of the other peripheral parts. My purpose for buying it is obviously to try and fix it, to fix the motherboard. Um, he had to like dig out other parts for the heatsink that wasn't in it. He had it all taken apart. So I had to ask for bits, but unfortunately what I've just discovered now is that there's one main board on it right here. There's a sub board. And there's a cable here that I'm missing. There's also that same cable from here to here, which I'm also missing. And I said, oh, I'm not sure, look, I'll, I'll work around that. But then I discovered that the power adapter is also missing. Now, there's a bit annoyed at this at the start, but I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to persist with it anyway, because we'll be able to show how you can, you know, connect your own power to it and then see if we can find the 3.3 volts and see if I can jumper that on. So without it, it might be a better challenge. Um, so I'm gonna take out this motherboard, uh, I'm gonna take pictures of it, and then I'm gonna try and get some power onto it. This is the main board for my laptop. So the first question is, since we don't have a DC power jack, how do we get power onto this motherboard? Well, first of all, we need to know what power it takes, so we can find that quite easily on the back of the cover so on our back cover of the laptop it says 19 volts 2.1 amps okay but where on the motherboard do we plug that in is the question well I was able to google and find that the power adapter sorry the DC power jack for this laptop looks something like this so there's six wires on it three red one two three and three black we're lucky with this one that there's no you know, there's simply just three reds and three blacks. There's no ID pin or anything like that. So we know that the three pins here are going to be our 19 volts coming in and our three black are going to be ground. So where on the motherboard is there a six pin connector? Well, there is in fact only one six pin connector on the motherboard and it's right over here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So all we need to do is to identify which three of those pins are the ground pins. So how we do that is we get our multimeter in continuity mode, we place our black probe to ground and then whichever ones buzz are our other ground pins. So when I place my probe to this pin, this pin and this pin, it buzzed, it didn't buzz when I press my probe to any of the top ones. So these are our three ground pins and these top three pins here are our three positive where our 19 volts comes in. So I had a number of options on how to bring that 19 volts right here. I could have soldered a wire on here, a red wire on here and bring that to my DC power supply and solder a black wire here and connect that to the uh, other crocodile clip of my power supply but I actually had a few similar connectors so I thought it might be just easier I sort of mocked up my own um, DC jack connector so with this in place I was able to get my own DC power supply with the crocodile clip connected to this one here with my red uh, my red crocodile clip I was able to connect my black crocodile clip to this wire right here. I set it to 19 volts with a low current initially just in case there was anything wrong. Um, when I did that I then got my multimeter probes, I switched it to volts DC, I placed my black probe right here, my red probe right here and I was reading 19 volts. So that just confirmed to me that I had 19 volts on the board and then that allowed me to start doing further troubleshooting. 
So we now have 19 volts coming uh, onto the board. So the next question is how far is that 19 volts getting into the system? So with my multimeter in volts DC once again, and placing my black probe to ground, as you can see right up here, we're going to start taking some measurements. So I did a continuity check just before, and it turns out that these pins here actually connect down to here. So what we're going to do is follow the 19 volts. So I place my probe right here. I measure that there was 19 volts at this point. And the other side of this, this is just an inductor. Uh, the other side of this, I also found that we had 19 volts. And then just checking on the pins here of the first MOSFET, I found that we had 19 volts at this point as well. So what I'm going to do in this is I'm going to mark with a red line where the 19 volts is getting to. So the next component that is in the path of our 19 volts is this Aon 7200. Now this is an N-channel MOSFET, so we can mark out the pins on that right here. So we've already established that we have 19 volts down here on the four drain pins. So we need to work out if this is switching on or off. If this MOSFET is switching on, we will also have 19 volts on the source pins here. So I place my probe to my gate pin right here, and I see that we have 24.8 volts at this. So that means that this MOSFET is getting the signal to turn on. And sure enough, when I check the source pin right here, we have 19 volts at this point also. The next component in line is another N-channel MOSFET. This is 9402GYT. So if we mark out the pins on that, that is these pins right here. So we've already established that we've got 19 volts here. We want to see if that 19 volts is making it through to the drain pins on the other side. This MOSFET is controlled by this gate pin right here. If this gate pin is high, it switches on. If the gate pin is low, it switches off. So when I place my probe to this gate pin right here, I see that there's 24.8 volts on this, meaning that the MOSFET is getting the signal to power on. And when I check on the drain pins, I am also getting 19 volts. So our 19 volts is making it this far also. The next component in line is this current sense resistor right here. So I just need to establish that the 19 volts is making it from here through this resistor and onto this side right here. So I place my probe right here and I measure 19 volts here also. So that establishes for me that our 19 volts is making it through our two input MOSFETs through our current sense resistor and onto this pad right here. There is a reverse bias diode right here. I've checked this and this is fine also, so it's not having any uh, negative impact on the circuit. It is actually fine. So this is our main 19 volt rail here. And what we need to establish is, is this making it out to all of the other secondary circuits? Now just before we go any further, a lot of you might be looking at this and saying, well look, our 19 volts is getting to here, but look, there's also another one of these similar N-channel 9402GYT MOSFETs right here. So is it not the case that the 19 volts is now just going through another MOSFET and is also present here? However, with this, you will see that we have two MOSFETs together and an inductor in between them. So when you see this, this is normally indicative of our high side, low side MOSFET configuration. And the way this works is that you have your 19 volts that comes into your high side N-channel MOSFET and you have ground on the other side of the other N-channel MOSFET. And what happens is this chip in between controls the gate pins of both the high side and the low side and it breaks that 19 volts down to another voltage right here. So if you look at that, what you'll see is that inductor goes through a power send or current sense resistor and is actually the battery voltage. So it seems to me like this is the circuit right here that breaks our 19 volts down to whatever the battery voltage is. It's marked as 7.2 volts on the battery, but the charging voltage is probably a little bit higher. But that is just in case anybody is questioning, you know, whether that's the 19 volt rail right there. So I'm going to check around the board here and see if we have 19 volts at the secondary circuits. So when I brought my multimeter around, still in DC volts, still with our black probe to ground, I started off over this side and I found there was 19 volts right here and 19 volts right here as well. So I know that the 19 volts is making it out to 
the rest of the secondary circuits. However, when I put my probe right here on this capacitor, I got a reading of 5 volts. So, when I'm getting 5 volts on this here, that tells me that this is one of the secondary circuits and most likely that this is our 3 and 5 volt always on LDO chip. So I found 19 volts on this capacitor right here which means that this I guess is the input for this chip here. This capacitor had 3.3 .3 volts on it and this one had 5 volts on it. So we're now another step down the line as well as knowing that we have our 19 volts main power rail online we also see that uh, our 3.3 volt always on and our 5 volt always on is also working because it's present our 3.3 volts is present right here and our 5 volts is present right here so I guess the next step would be to see where the startup chip is because like I said I don't have the the battery or sorry the, the power button for this so what I'm gonna need to try and do here is work out if there's some means of finding where the power button comes in and then trying to start the laptop by jumping it. Okay, I had a search around the board and I suspect that this is probably the startup chip. It's a KB9010BF ENE. It's the only one that I can see that looks anything like a startup chip. Uh, there are a couple of chips on this that I just literally cannot read what is on them. Um, there's a few of them like this and this that I just cannot find out what the model number of the chip is. Even if I did know what this chip was and I had a data sheet and the pinouts for it, I'm not going to be able to get in at the pins to try and find out which one is the power button and jump it to the ground because it's a ball grid array. Uh, all of the pins are essentially underneath the chip here. So I'm not going to waste any time with trying to do that. Um, I've also tried to see if I could locate, there should be 3.3 .3 volts on one of these for the power button. However, when I went down through it, um, there are a number of these that has 3.3 uh, .3 volts on them. Plus it's very precarious, these are tiny, so I don't want to risk damaging it uh, with that as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to contact the original owner and see if they can provide me with this cable right here. As I said, I'm missing this cable which goes from this to a subboard, and that subboard has the power button on it. So I'll need to contact them and see if I can get that. I'm going to leave it at that for this video. Um, obviously, this has been very frustrating. I bought this laptop for you know the singular reason of getting content for the channel, just something to repair. And it's very frustrating that there's no power adapter, no DC power jack, no power button. Uh, it's just very, very frustrating. However, even by just doing these, I'm starting to evolve better techniques of describing the stuff. Just looking at it here now, I think this. I think I will maintain with this method of following the voltage onto the board. I think that brings clarity. I think writing over the names of the chips as I've done here is, you know, brings clarity to it as well because it makes it easier to see what's happening. So even for the progress I've made with that, I'm going to post this video and try to evolve these techniques. I'm sort of learning as I go along with this on this channel as well. It's by no means the finished article, but what I want to be in the position of is maybe in about six months that we can very quickly get in a board, photograph it, map the 19 volts onto the board to show, you know, to demonstrate where it goes, and then, you know, bring it through a troubleshooting procedure that is very easy and clear to see from the screen. So that's where I intend to to bring the channel. Um, but like I said, for the moment, this is this has been a very frustrating and time-consuming video. But I'm going to persist with it for the moment, and we'll have something new next week. Maybe even a power button for this one, who knows. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and post any comments that you might have below. Thank you.